Hey everybody, Shoebox Legends here. Thanks for joining me today. From a different angle, got an overhead view going on. I'm gonna make an attempt to show some cards that are in a binder here. Haven't looked at these in a very long time. Actually, I think the last time that we looked at this binder was in my very first episode ever recorded here for the channel. But this is gonna be a video response to Eric over at the Card Closet. And I will leave a link below in the event that you are unfamiliar with or not subscribed to uh, Eric and his channel. But he is an amazing collector. Uh, very glad that I've gotten to know him in the community here uh, over the last year plus. Um, he is into uh, Boston Red Sox, so he's a winner in my book. Has an amazing uh, team collection of Boston Red Sox cards. Uh, also collects the Lakers, the Steelers, uh, set collector has an amazing run of uh, completed sets that he shows off on the channel as well. So what I love about Eric is he reminds me a little bit of myself as a collector in that he seems to be into a little bit of everything. Um, but at the same time, he's very methodical about uh, his purchases and his approach to collecting, but he really gets into a little bit of everything. If you visit his channel, uh, you're not gonna be bored or disappointed. Uh, you may see a basketball set from the 70s, and then a week later, you might see Cracker Jack baseball cards from, you know, 1915. Um, and then prior to that, you might see a Com C rummage where he's got a bunch of shiny uh, parallels or something along those lines. So he really runs the gamut. Highly recommend his channel. And uh, he's doing a video response uh, because he recently had a video hit 10,000 views, uh, which is insane to me. I don't know if I have 10,000 views total in the history of my channel. So uh, major congrats on that, Eric. I uh, don't even know what video it was, but I'm sure it was well-deserved. Uh, love your content and your approach. And uh, what Eric wanted to see for this video response, he's got a, a generous prize that he's offering up. And all you need to do is make a video response where you show some of your oldest cards that you have in your collection. Uh, not oldest in terms of when they were produced, um, but oldest in terms of you've had them in your possession the longest. Uh, like your original cards or the cards that you can trace furthest back in terms of having ownership over. And uh, for me, it was easy to determine what I wanted to cover in this installment, and it's the binder that you see right here in front of you. Um, I've told the story before, but uh, my two younger brothers and I uh, started playing youth hockey in the winter of 1989, uh, or maybe even the winter prior. And uh, we started getting into the cards um, in the winter of 89 because we were playing hockey and we wanted to learn more about the game uh, of course, this was the pre-internet era uh, where you couldn't just get information at your fingertips or the click of a mouse. Um, you needed, you know, books or uh, conversations with people or sports cards. Uh, so the way we got into the hobby was uh, over the course of that winter, my dad on occasion, maybe once a week, uh, maybe twice a week, would stop on his way home from work at a local hobby shop and pick up a handful of packs. And when he got home from work, he would give them to my brothers and I as a gift. And we'd sit around the kitchen table, open the packs, read the card backs, learn about the game that we were learning how to play ourselves uh, and the players and the history and trade and, and fill out our binders. And it was just a blast. So we liked it enough that my dad uh, got some of these old software binders uh, back from his work. Um, I've removed the, the binding since back in the day, but... Um, these are just three ring binders that held like computer manuals or something like that. Back in the late 80s, uh, they were being thrown out at my dad's work. He brought home one for each of us. Um, we had a very early computer at the time, an Amiga computer, um, which was pretty cutting edge for 1990, spring of 1990. And my dad made these custom covers for my brothers and I uh, to go on the front of our hockey card binders. So he found this little you know, trophy logo, or perhaps even drew it himself. I, I have to check with him, but I believe my dad made this uh, like in some kind of a, a paint program, early paint program. Um, and then we each got this as a cover sheet for our binder. And what we would do, you know, we each had our own approach, but if we look inside the binder here, um, the way that I did it back in the day, you know, I wasn't a complete set guy. I was trying to learn about the players and the team. So like many kids did, uh, I organized my cards by team. Um, so, and I, I did it alphabetically by team name, not city. Um, so like the Blackhawks are the first team in the binder. Uh, I would open up my pack and if I got a new Blackhawks card that I didn't have already, or if I could trade with one of my brothers to get one, uh, it would just go in the next slot on the page. And, you know, sometimes there'll be a, a hole here where I pulled the card out to, 
to trade it away to one of my brothers to get another one or whatever the case is. But essentially, I would organize them by team. Um, and, you know, blues are next after Blackhawks and so on and so forth. Um, these aren't necessarily all my cards. I had some, like the second year Brett Hull card probably used to reside here, and I may have taken it out to put it in a top loader because of its value uh, at the time. I'm not sure. Um, but we proceed on. And I didn't, you know, pluck all the big names out of here as I got older. We've still got plenty of Hall of Famers. Ray Bork. Um, in your packs, you would get one sticker like this that featured a team logo and a number or maybe some pucks, um, little stickers that you could put on your hockey helmet. Um, and those would typically get on the team sheet as well where I had them. Uh, here's a nice Cam Neely. I always like that one. So yeah, these were, uh, I mean, these are the exact same cards um, that have resided in this binder since 1990. These are the ones that my grubby little, you know, seven-year-old kid hands were prying out of wax packs and sorting and and putting away. And uh, I've left this thing untouched to this day. I'm so glad that I did. Uh, my dad was cool enough to preserve this for me, um, handed it to me uh, maybe like 10 or 15 years ago when I bought my house and was kind of moving out of my parents for good. And um, I'm just so thrilled that this was preserved. This is really what got me started in the hobby period. Um, this ignited a passion for collecting sports cards and, and learning about sports that um, still exists to this day, you know, over 30 years later. So um, this is priceless to me. Uh, if I sold off my whole collection tomorrow, I would keep this binder and I will never get rid of this uh, for as long as I live. Uh, more Hall of Famers here. How's that for a, a trio atop the page? Lanny McDonald, Joe Mullen, and Joe Neuendijk. All Hall of Famers and uh, guys who had just come off a Stanley Cup championship with the city of Calgary. And I believe that's Lanny McDonald's final top slash Ropeachy card. Another note, you'll notice these are all tops cards. Uh, living in the U.S., I had a lot more access to tops than I did Opeachy. Um, so most of my hockey card collection, I I've filled in some Opeachy as I've gotten older, but from back in the day, I just had tops. And what's interesting about this one year, um, this is kind of agreed upon by collectors as like the one year where tops was actually more rare or desirable or sought after than Opeachy. Um, so to this day, I think this is the only set from the 1980s where a tops version of the card is actually going to demand a little bit more of a premium uh, than its Opeachy counterpart. So interesting fact there. You know, continuing to move through, obviously you have the, the powerhouse teams of the day with the, the Islanders and the Oilers, uh, those dynasty teams, Winnipeg Jets. I mean, I, I just soaked this stuff up. But as I said, this really kind of ignited the collecting fire in me and, and the passion for learning more about the sport of hockey. Uh, these sheets, uh, you can, I don't know if you can make it out on camera, but these are definitely not ultra pro. They are really low quality, very thin, flimsy sheets, uh, but I've never replaced them and I never will just because I, I really like keeping this intact exactly as it was as sort of a historical reference of uh, my entry into the hobby. We got the great one here, Mr. Gretzky, Wayne Gretzky. So cool stuff. Um, the big rookie cards in this were uh, Joe Sackick and Brian Leach, both Hall of Famers. Here's the Sackick, as a matter of fact, right in the front and center on the Nordiques page here, alongside the sticker and some of his teammates. Um, probably the single most desirable card from the 89-90 release is that Joe Sackick. Uh, Peter Stastny, no slouch either. Talked about him in a recent video. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll continue to flip through here. We're, we're almost towards the end. We're all the way down to letter N here with the North Stars. Um, but you get the point. There's Yari Curry still with the Oilers. Um, but yeah, just memories in here that um, I could never replace. And this is literally a priceless binder for me. Uh, here's the other big rookie, Brian Leach. Um, I think I've talked about that one before. But U.S. born defenseman who's uh, enshrined in the Hall of Fame. And you can really see how kind of old and beat up. I mean, this was stored in a basement for years. I, I keep it in my hobby room now. And uh, it's nice and climate controlled and it sits on the bookshelf, but there is evidence of, you know, mold and basement storage. And, you know, this thing's over three decades old at this point. Uh, I feel pretty old after uh, all these decades have passed. So I'm assuming this binder is uh, feeling the same way, but just really, really cool. And uh, I don't run into a lot of collectors that have something like this, or I hear a lot of stories like, I wish I would have kept my childhood collection, or I don't really remember what my first cards were. And um, that's certainly the case for a lot of my childhood collection. You know, when I inherited um, my collection as an adult, a lot of the cards were just so beat up or old or gross or, you know, needed to be thrown out, quite honestly. But uh, this binder is one that I've held on to, always will. 
Uh, and of course, the very final page in it is my beloved hometown, Hartford Whalers, uh, featuring the great Ron Francis. This was pre-Francis trade. Uh, you can really, I mean, you can tell based on the condition of this card that uh, we, we really would kind of beat these things up. There's no way any of these are getting submitted to, uh, you know, PSA or SGC anytime soon, but uh, they're worth more to me than any 10 that would come back from, from either of those companies. Uh, I was a big Whalers fan at the time, and my family would, you know, get to a few games a year at the Hartford Civic Center. And then I've got kind of a random page, I guess, in the back here of uh, some of these tall cards out of Fleer Power Play. These came years later, and I must have just used the, the space that was available at the back of this binder to uh, to store some of those. But that's a wrap. Um, I've, I've kind of droned on long enough here, and I know this binder is something that I did show at one point in the past uh, on the channel, but there was no way that I could do this VR and talk about my first ever or my oldest cards without uh, going straight to this. It's uh, the single most prized thing in my entire collection. Uh, it's the video that or, or the item that I featured in my very first video here uh, to get started on the YouTube platform and uh, something that I'll always cherish. So uh, Eric, major congrats again for uh, 10,000 views on that video and uh, thank you for the inspiration to go dig out uh, this binder and do another probably overdue episode here. Um, it's a perfect time of year to show this off with Father's Day approaching and um, I hope my dad sees this. I know he does watch some of the content here on the channel, but I uh, just want him to know how much it meant to me, uh, the effort that he put in to get my brothers and I involved in the sport and involved in collecting, and uh, this is something that I will always cherish. So uh, thank you, Eric, again. Uh, to anyone who's not familiar with Eric, please check the link below. Go visit the card closet, give him a sub, and check out some of his videos. He's a solid guy, and I uh, guarantee you will like the content over there if, if you enjoy this channel. So thanks again, and uh, I'll be back in the very near future with some more sports card content. Until then, I hope everybody stays safe and enjoys the hobby. Take care.